Hey everybody, Eric Worrell here with RunPrep.com and I wanted to show you how you can create a pre-screening survey using Google Forms via Google Drive. So this has come up a few times in the Facebook group and people have been sharing what they do uh, to uh, ask questions in the pre-screening survey. So what, where would this come into play? So let's say you have posted a rental listing and in your rental listing you've listed some of your uh, initial screening criteria such as your stance on uh, smokers, uh, maybe your rent to income uh, ratio standard, your uh, stance on pets or animals I should say. Uh, so what you can do is you can create a custom survey with Google Forms, that's what we're looking at right here, and you can create a custom link that you can put into your rental listings and say if you want to uh, proceed forward and you're interested in this rental property, please fill out my pre-screening survey at this link. So when they click that link, it'll take you to something that looks like this. And the magic of these Google Forms is with something we call logic. And I'm gonna show you how that works. I'm gonna show you how to create this uh, form for yourself and show you how everything works. So first, let's see exactly what we have here. So pre-screening survey for rental one, two, three, Candy Lane. All right, this is a question you may think that maybe it doesn't matter, but in my opinion, it does. So you ask them to, uh, will they answer the following questions honestly? Now I've got this option one in here. This is something I gotta delete out. But if they click no and click next, then you do not meet my minimum criteria, all right? It just takes them right to the end of the survey and says, I'm sorry, you do not pass. But they say yes, and I'll show you how to delete out this option one later. Uh, you can see that it goes to the next question. Do you smoke, yes or no? Again, if they click yes, because maybe you don't want smokers in this rental property, this is all up to your screening criteria, it'll take them right to this page. So this is where the logic kicks in. So depending on how they answer the question, uh, determines what section they see next. So they say no, they move on. So in this hypothetical scenario, I'm basing this on a 3x uh, rent to income ratio standard. So in this particular situation, instead of saying, do you make three times or do you gross three times the monthly rent? It's a little bit easier sometimes to give them a specific dollar amount. Do you gross at least $3,000 monthly? Now, if you had a 3x uh, ratio and your rental was $1,500, then in your case, you'd write $4,500 monthly. So please choose one of the following. And then as you know, if they say, no, I do not, you're going to see this. Or sorry, you do not meet the minimum criteria. But if they say, yes, I do, they will see this. So it says, congratulations. You meet the minimum criteria required for this rental property. Please fill out the information below and we'll get in touch with you about this rental property. Your name, your email, your phone number. So what happens when somebody enters this? So I'm gonna write Eric testing and I will put, uh, let's say test at gmail.com and then phone number, I'm gonna say 999-888-7766. All right, so let's see what happens. So it says, uh, your response has been recorded. You can make this say whatever you want. You can say, we'll be reaching out to you within you know, X or whatever you want it to say here. One of the things too, if you wanna get real savvy is you can put a link to a Calendly calendar for them to actually uh, pick a time to chat with you, but that's a whole nother topic. So now that I've filled this out, let's take a look at what this um, survey looks like on the front end and where those responses get recorded to. So I've already tested this. Um, survey out a few times and you can see individual responses. This is not ideal in my opinion. What I would do is I click view responses in sheets and what you'll get here is a timestamp. You will get um, the answer to their questions and you will see their names. You can see Eric Worrell, Eric Testing and then different phone numbers. And the nice thing about this being timestamped is you're actually getting these in the order of the uh, interest from your uh, rental applicants. So if you really wanna do things by the book, you can really just go through in the order that you uh, receive everything based on this sheet. And you will not see the people that do not meet your criteria. Uh, so as far as, you know, if you get some kind of discrimination claim, you can point exactly to this and say, look, this is the process that I use for screening out initial uh, interest in my uh, rental property. And this person did not make it on the Google Sheet that I use and I work down this sheet in order. So, all right, let's go into how to adjust and how everything works, how do you edit this form. So the first thing you would do is, and these are some of the uh, rent prep bandana pictures, thank you guys, it's awesome to see those. Uh, I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna click new here in the upper left hand corner. If you don't have a Google Drive account, all that you have to do is create a Google account, same way you'd create a Gmail account. And then once you're in there, you can click 
um, new here and you can see that I'm logged in with my rent prep account here click new click more and then Google Forms okay so you can see what we have over here and I'm just gonna walk us through exactly what this says and show you how to set this up you can even pick colors if you want I kind of go for that kind of rent prep color there right and then I'm just gonna copy things to make this go a little bit quicker to show you exactly what I'm creating here because uh, I don't want to waste your time with this part of it and uh, we'll call this um, example uh, pre-screening form okay so the very first thing you want to do is separate your untitled questions all right I don't want this I want this all to be in different sections so the way you add sections is over here so this is what they will see on that very first screen if you recall um, so why don't we add a section and then what we're gonna, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and we're gonna do yes or no so what we're gonna do is click this plus uh, add question and it automatically picked multiple choice. You need it to be multiple choice to be able to do logic, and I'll show you exactly why that is. So I will answer the following questions uh, honestly. All right, option one. All right, for some reason it did. Uh, it looks like it moved me to a multiple choice grid. Uh, option one, yes, I will. Option two, no, I won't. Okay, seems like a silly question, but the reason you ask this is there's studies that have been done that have proven if you ask somebody to answer honestly on the front end of a survey, it'll change the responses that you get. What it does is it creates something called cognitive dissonance. Um, it's kind of like a discomfort in somebody because we want to act consistently who we portray ourselves to be. So if you say, yes, I'm an honest person, and then you start answering questions dishonestly, uh, what it does is it creates that, that tension within you and it makes you actually change the way you'll answer questions. Uh, there's been a lot of psychological studies that have proven this, so you'll just have to believe me on that. All right, and very important uh, aspect, I'm gonna say that this is required. So you can click that. So I haven't yet gotten to the logic uh, part of this yet, and I'm gonna explain that in the next section. So I'm gonna add another section, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip ahead to you do not meet the minimum criteria, because I wanna show you how this works. So you do not meet my minimum criteria. Uh, we're sorry, but you do not meet the minimum criteria. I mean, you can put in whatever you want here, right? Um, okay, so that's section three of three. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to the section two of three. And what I wanna do is add section three, do you smoke uh, from this one, okay? So again, add new section, do you smoke? And then I will answer the following questions honestly. It looks like I cloned this. Let me just make sure. Uh, looks like I kind of messed up there. Let me uh, delete this one. Here's how you would delete it. Uh, delete section. Okay. I agree. All right. Let's try this again. All right. I'm going to move this section. So you can see it's untitled. I want this to go down one. This is good. This kind of shows you how to organize things here. And I'm going to save. So because we want this to be the pre-screening survey, ask them to answer honestly. And now we're going to hit them with the do you smoke question. And I don't want the additional, uh, that's a pretty standard question right there. So what I'm going to do is add question. Uh, please answer one of the following. Please answer yes or no if you smoke. The reason I'm putting it in there again like that is uh, the um, this right here, you, where you get this question here, you want to make sure that the titles all add up correctly. So if you, you want to make sure that it's pulling the right data so it's easy to read your spreadsheet. So going back, we have, do you, uh, please answer yes or no if you smoke. Yes, I do. No, I do not. Okay, so we're going to make that required. And again, you want to make sure all these things are required. You can see that in the bottom right-hand corner. So 
here is the first one. So we're gonna click here and this is where we're gonna add logic. Um, what I wanna do is make sure that we're multiple choice and then go to section based on answer. So this is another way of saying logic. And what that means is uh, I will answer the questions. Uh, honestly, this person is going to go um, to the do you smoke question, which you can see um, below is the next question on the screen. If they say no, I won't answer honestly. You're gonna say you do not meet my minimum criteria. All right, so then what we're gonna do is do you smoke? And again, lower right hand corner here, go to section based on answer. Yes, I do. If you do not accept smokers in your rental property, which is a legal screening criteria, you would say you do not meet my minimum criteria. Now, if it says no, I do not smoke, then they pass this question and you would take them to the next question, which doesn't exist yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add section. All right, and it goes in the right uh, section here, it's section four or five. So I'm just gonna go back again to uh, copy and paste uh, from the other form here. Or how about we say um, minimum uh, gross salary requirement. Do you gross at least 3,000 monthly? Okay, option one, yes, I do. Option two, no, I don't. All right, I'm gonna make this required once again. So what we wanna go back to now is the do you smoke question. So they say, no, I do not. You want them to go to the next question. So this is gonna say, minimum gross salary requirement. All right, and now let's say this is hypothetically the last question um, that we would wanna do. Uh, we're gonna add one more section, right? And this is the one that says congratulations. So, and again, you want all of these. I'm gonna make this a short answer. Uh, and then you can clone these too. This is a little trick. Your name, your email, and you can see these are all uh, short answers your email, your name, your email, your phone number. Perfect, these are all required. So I have that set up and now we're gonna go back and again, we're gonna go to section based on answer. So they do you gross at least 3000 monthly? They're gonna get the congratulations message and if they say no, I do not, they will see you do not meet my minimum criteria. So that is all set. And again, you can edit these any way that you see fit. And what I'm gonna do right now is click on settings up here. This is important. So if you, uh, and on our particular case, you uh, may not see what we see, Fidelis Screening Solutions, that's the parent company that Rent Prep exists underneath. Um, I'm gonna uh, make sure that's not clicked because this is gonna be going out to whoever wants to fill out this survey. And if you wanna limit to one response, which might be a good idea so people don't get through it and then be like, oh, well, no, I wanna do something different or something. Uh, you can do that. Um, you can collect email addresses if you want, and you can also make it so that um, response receipts. So basically the respondents receive a copy of their responses, which um, that, you know, probably a good practice to have so that they have that on their end as well. So uh, I'm just gonna click presentation here. Uh, we don't need to, you can show a progress bar if you want. I want, you know, shuffle questions or orders and then uh, make this a quiz, assign point values to questions and allow auto grading. Uh, if you really wanted to get into the weeds, right, you could actually have grades assigned to the applicants before they even fill out, um, or before you even have a discussion with them. But really what we're trying to do is just weed out some of those tire kickers and um, try to get some of the people who don't meet your minimum criteria before you get on a phone call or email conversation. So uh, I'm going to click save. And then what you would do is you click send and then what I would have it set up as is click this little link icon here. And I mean, if you get real fancy, you can even embed this onto uh, different things, but let's not go crazy. Shorten URL, and I'm gonna copy this. And then now this is the URL that you would send and share in your listings. So whether that's on Facebook Marketplace, um, on Craigslist, Zillow, you can put this in and say, very important, muy importante, if you want to be considered for this rental property, you must fill out this pre-screening survey. All uh, email requests and you know other uh, forms of communication will not be responded to unless you fill out this uh, survey. All right, so what does this look like? You should already know because we just went through everything, but pre-screening uh, survey for rental 123 Candy Lane. So for some reason it's asking for email address here, I probably screwed something up. So uh, let's make sure that uh, we have this filled out correctly. So I'm gonna click X here, 
and yeah you can see that accidentally slid in the email address here oh you know what that is that's um uh, collect email addresses so why don't we click save and refresh all right so maybe you don't want that email address on the uh, front hand i personally wouldn't because i don't want that information unless they pass the survey so click next i agree to answer honestly yes i will do you smoke no i do not minimum gross salary yes i do next congratulations so you have made it through but as we discussed before if they say yes i do smoke next you do not meet my minimum criteria. We're sorry, but you do not meet the minimum criteria. They may just go off the page or click submit and your response has been recorded. So that is how it works. And now uh, again, going back, this is the example pre-screening form. You can see the responses. You can look at them in this way. You can look at them individually and then you would just kind of toggle left and right. But here's one uh, response or my preferred method is you would just create the spreadsheet I create a new spreadsheet create all right it's going to pop open here and you can see in this particular one what it looks like when somebody fails a question now this is one of the things i mentioned earlier uh, you want to make sure uh, please answer yes or no if you smoke so if you recall um i said uh you know this part of the question do you smoke the title does not show up on your spreadsheet the thing that shows up is the actual title of the question so it's uh, helpful to repeat um, what the question is in the actual question, this part right here. So that way, when you're looking at this uh, file here, and you know, if this is me, what I would do is I'd probably just, you know, adjust the uh, columns a little bit just to make it real easy to see everything. And again, this is one where let's say uh, this particular person claims discrimination or whatever they want to say, you can collect their email address up front if you wanted to. Uh, that might be a good idea because then you could say you know what the reason that i did not follow up with this person was because they failed the question on um if they smoke because they said yes they do and i don't accept smokers and that's a legal screening criteria so hopefully this um this exercise is helpful for you yes it takes some time to set up but here's one of the really really nice things about this um, let's take a look i want to find uh i'm going to find this example pre-screening form all right and I want to make a copy so let's say you got one two three candy lane but you've got five rental properties but you use the same initial screening criteria for every one of them so what I'm gonna do is call this one example pre-screening form uh, four five six candy lane now uh, you can probably see where this is going already but what you have already is a almost completed uh, pre-screening survey. You just wanna make sure that you go through. And in this particular case for this, you know, if you got a different you know, uh, monthly gross that you asked for on the salary requirements, you can do that. You can edit all this out, but this is already done. And now this will create a separate uh, Google Sheet that would record answers for this rental property. So you could even do this not, um, so, pre-screening survey for rental 456 Candy Lane on, uh, what is today's date? It's uh, 530, 18. So you know what I mean? Like you could have this labeled in a way um, so that you always have a history of all of the applicants that come through and then you don't have to go and dig through your email that you share with everything else. This would be your initial uh, list of people that are applying for your rental property. And I think that this uh, could take you a little bit of time to set up, but in the long run is going to help you out tremendously to organize and get rid of some of those tire kickers. And if you have any questions, comments, um, feel free to ask. I'd love to answer them. Uh, I've done a little bit of work with Google Forms in the past, so I'll do my best to answer any of the questions that you may have. All right, good luck, take care, and I hope this helps to weed out some of those tire kickers and make your process a little bit smoother and easier to manage when you're talking about your rental properties. All right, take care.